So, let me tell you something that you should have already realized by now about this fucking show you're listening to. This shit is supposed to be for mature audiences. As in grown-ups, mentally mature. It's supposed to talk about adult subjects, an adult frame of mind. It's not fucking that at all. This is two emotionally regressed, broken half-wits pretending to offer insight on movies. All they really offer you is an endless sexual perversion and a laundry list of personal paraphilia issues. You can make your own choices in life, but you have to choose this as entertainment. You know you're better than this. You have to know you are better than listening to Cinema Psyops. consecutive week of cinema psyops i'm your host court the guy who can finally breathe like a normal human being after weeks of torment from one shitty cold and joining me back from his vacation all the way across the city of omaha sitting uncomfortably in his bunker and pissed he has to do this week too is my co-host matt yeah like what the fuck where's room service with my drink um i've been waiting for that uh so if you guys could get after that that'd be that'd just be super for me thanks thanks a lot (laughs) welcome back to the real world son you don't have underprivileged people waiting at your beck and call for a dollar a pop now do you well you know what you didn't have to put it that way really makes me enjoy my vacation less (laughs) <laughs> no, notice I said I didn't, I fully enjoyed it still. Just now a little bit less, but I still enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I said something similar to my wife and she looked at me like, you're a dick. Why did you have to fucking say that? Like, She didn't say those words, but the look yeah. on her face said the that The look to there me. said it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I, I had probably had the same look in my face because I would be lying if I said I didn't have that same thought while on vacation, by the way. I'm not a fucking heartless animal, so... Uh, you know, I, I fucking realized, you know, wow, 
really, really probably kind of taking advantage of people on their own home turf, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> but oh well. But oh well, shit happens. I was already there and I paid for the vacation, so... <laughs> Really, all you can do is not be someone who is such a fucking prick to them and be as kind as yeah. you can. And I trust that everyone that was with you was. Uh, everyone was. Uh, yeah. 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 No, no. I wouldn't I wouldn't stand for that kind of malarkey of being a dick to uh, people whose country you're a guest in, for right. fuck's sake. Because someone's going to be at a resort. Someone's going to yeah. be there. That's going to happen. Otherwise, those folks wouldn't have the jobs that they have. Um, yeah. And, and, and they also say that it's like the the COVID shit devastated Cancun because it destroyed their main fucking way of making money. Okay. So. Right. And so the fact that people are going there is it's going to happen yeah. and it should happen. They, yeah. they need the tourism. They do want the tourism. Right. What you can do is recognize the fact like you did. Hey, uh, the yeah. least I can do is treat these people like human beings and be super polite to everyone that is helping me at this yeah. resort and not be a complete douchebag. Don't be a dick bag respect the people while you're there you are a guest in their country and maybe just maybe try to make america not look like a bunch of cunts we are a bunch of cunts but maybe let's just do our part to maybe not look like it <laughs> i have uh, an actual recording of matt kicking the doors open to the resort that he was at hey fuckers religion's bullshit god's not real <laughs> well, i think i get my ass kicked out there talking i gotta talk <laughs> I don't I don't think I'd be around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't have America's a bunch of cunts up in front of me, so I just chose that one because I prefer when you say stuff like that. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that you're back from vacation, let's talk about the Fulci movie that you get to see, even though you missed last week's, which Ricky and I covered, uh, which is some of the best recording I've had on this show in a while. Uh, Rick, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know you don't listen to the show, but you should go back and listen to that one with Ricky. Cause, I should uh, listen to that one, huh? Yeah, because he's real close at stealing your job, dude. <laughs> is he? Yeah, fucking Ricky. God damn it. <laughs> You're like, this is all I have. And this is all I got, Ricky. You're taking it away. And I'm giving the bare minimum to keep it. And I am. Um, <laughs> don't take well, it. Well, I mean, just. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, 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 hey. We don't need that kind of factual talk around here <laughs> who the hell do you think you are sir <laughs> i am he who runs barter town the back of my head actually hurts from laughing so that's going to keep you on the show for now because uh as much fun as i had with ricky that actually laughing at your pain is way more enjoyable for me and it actually is causing me pain so we're gonna be talking oh, there you go lucio fulci's 1990 demonia i fucking told everybody we would be watching it or talking about it on the show real soon and by real soon i meant this week <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there you go. Yeah, I, I knew I was in for it with a Fulci film. That's for sure. So, yeah, I almost want you to go back and watch Enigma just to see what you think about it. But like, it's an hour and a half of your life that you're not going to get back. Uh, it's, it's not all that great. No, no. Uh, it's um, it's one of those films that defies logic and reason to the point where you like it, but you can't justify why. Oh, all right, all right. Well, I mean, there's at least there's something right. involved. So, so while you're listening to the episode to decide whether or not Ricky really is going to steal your job, um, yeah, actually, yeah. kind of pay attention to the things we're talking about the film, and then you'll see whether or not you want to watch it. It's still in the folder. Have fun. All right, we'll do. And while you're doing that, we're going to take this break and play this fucking promo. This will keep you quiet. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. You call me cutting a new show. I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of the many creators you can find on Legion Podcasts. I said quiet! My fellow podcasters and I work hard to bring you the best in horror podcasting, but that comes at a cost. What's that like to live deliciously? Not that, but also, yes. No, what I'm getting at is that there are server costs, costs for good microphones and software for editing, all the things that make our shows, you know, fun to listen to. And you can help. If you're enjoying the shows on legionpodcasts.com or in the Legion Network available on iTunes and Stitcher, just about anywhere you can download a podcast, really, you can help us out and get a little something for your trouble at patreon.com forward slash legionpodcasts. For just two bucks a month, you get a pair of movie commentaries exclusive to Patreon, and for five dollars, you can also join us for a monthly screening of a movie. All of that available on patreon.com forward slash Legion Podcasts. We appreciate it, and thank you for listening. Now, 
Back to the cutting room. So if you are listening on the Pirate Radio edit, you just rocked out to Power Wolf. Demons are a girl's best friend, which, if you listen very closely to the lyrics, fits pretty fucking primo well with the story of Demonia, which I would try to further sell you with this trailer, but it only exists in a form that is sound effects and clips of shit that happens in the film that's gross. So let's roll the fucking review. Right. Demonia. The first 20 minutes, uh... Well, we see a bunch of nuns are being taken away, and they're not looking like they're about to have a good time, and they're certainly not. They start getting crucified. Uh, so then we cut back, and we see there's la- these people that are in a seance, and this lady's kind of having visions of all this uh, uh, crucifying. And uh, she she passes out, which I, I would assume one would do if they got, like, a live vision of uh, people being crucified. Uh, not, not the uh, easiest way for someone to go. Um, uh, so nuns being crucified is not a thank you movie. Yeah, no, it's not a thank you. Anybody being crucified is not a thank you movie. That's, that's fair. So it's just, it's cruel. Yeah. 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 As it turns out, uh, we as human beings, um, we're pretty shit, shit bags throughout our entire past and, and present and, and well, probably the future. We learn real slow. We don't go around crucifying anybody anymore, but we're, we're still pretty much shit bags. Their voice boxes yeah. were even crucified as well. It's pretty gruesome. Yeah, yeah, they they nailed right in the voice. Yeah, they they did a little bit extra crucifying, which is uh, which is a bit <laughs> fucked up. Yeah, they nailed uh, the neck, the hands, and the feet of each yeah. nun. Yeah, yeah, and didn't even have the common courtesy for a uh, 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 crown of thorns. So, uh, fuck them, I guess. You know, that's misogyny, though. That's definitely misogyny. Uh, anywho, uh, she wakes up from being passed out, and that is our first clip. What happened? How did I get here? You fainted. I brought you home. You? I don't understand. Just put your mind to it. Oh. I remember now. I was at I know. You were attending another of those foolish seances you're so fond of. How many times have you heard me tell you, Liza? An archaeologist digs into the past with his intelligence, not his superstition. Remember? I go to those seances, Professor, for fun. It isn't serious. Well, I hope not. Now, get some rest. Try to dream about the beauty, the grace, the ancient Greek culture we're going to study in Sicily. Once we get there and start to do some work on the dig, we'll forget all about things like seances and black magic. The plane leaves at 6.30. Have your bags ready at a quarter past four. I'll pick you up. Yeah, don't worry your pretty little head about those stupid seances. (laughs) Why are you wasting your goddamn time, you foolish, foolish person? Could this guy be more condescending? I mean, holy shit. 
I mean, he, I mean, he, I mean, he probably could be more condescending, but I don't know if even she would have tolerated that. Yeah, that was some pretty. I mean, he was kind of a douche. So, oh, he was like borderline mansplaining at all times. Oh, dude, it wasn't borderline. He was definitely mansplaining. He was like three seconds away from just saying, oh, listen here, little lady. Uh, He was about to tell her how doing seances for fun should be done. He was about to jump into that. Listen, seances are silly, but if you really want to know how to do them right. (laughs) Like, yeah, he's being a dick, but I also don't disagree with anything he's telling her about seances being ridiculous and and stupid. Yeah, seances are dumb. So, yeah, this is is, is like that fucking gif of uh, Falcon saying he's out of line, but he's not wrong. Yeah, he's, he's... it's out of line. It, it's it's uh, the the Big Lebowski. You're not wrong. You're just an asshole. It's true. <laughs> I mean, so there's all that. And we're at the dig now. So we're at this whole thing that they're supposed to be at. And she is way not even close to being present mentally in this. She is uh, she is very much just kind of still thinking about the nuns. And he admonishes her again for it. Uh, you know, telling her, hey, come on, you need to pay attention to what you're doing here. Uh, obviously, everything I'm doing is way more important. And uh, it becomes you- a motif. It's a bit ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then a dude shows up and he kind of you-, you can tell he's local government. Uh, and he's like, hey, listen, um, and they're, they're kind of, you-, you know, he's like, hey, can we get the town people behind us? And this local government guy's like, hey. They don't like you. They think the past should stay the past and death should stay death. And everyone's like, "Oh, okay. I mean, that sounds weird." So, we've got a we've we've got a pretty hardcore uh republic that doesn't want to be there. Uh so that doesn't want these people there. Um so there's a there's something to be set. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty much every horror movie, though. Any archaeological yeah. dig that goes into anything that they shouldn't be poking around in or that had something to do with something in a deep, dark secret of some town's past. This is how yeah. they're going to react. Yeah. You know, it's of course. it's it's horror movie 101 bread and butter kind of stuff. And I'm kind of shocked that Fulci included this much of it in his film. This is yeah. way more coherent of a movie than I remembered it being. Yeah. Um, then we see some town folk, uh, and they're kind of talking about how these people should stop. Uh, nothing but bad shit's waiting for these people, especially the woman, if they keep digging. Well, later on, uh, they talk to an old team member, uh, and they're kind of talking, and they want to get, like, because he's done, like, some under- underwater investigations in this area, and he says, well, the people around here... Again, it goes through the same thing. It, I almost did a clip of this, but it's redundant as fuck. Because, again, he just says they're all very superstitious. They're, no one's going to be your friend. Blah, blah, blah. Did you recognize um, the guy who was the captain of the boat? No. His name is Al Cliver. He was one of the main actors in Lucio Fulci's Zombie, which I know you oh, have wow. seen. You watched that with me. He was in um, something else that we covered as well. Um, yeah. Let me think here for a second. Okay, he was in 2020 Texas Gladiators, but we haven't covered that in, like, forever. Uh, you watched the Beyond with me. That's the one that's in the hospital and in Louisiana. And he yeah. was he was one of the coroner guys who meets an untimely demise. Also zombies and stuff. So he's been in a ton. I mean, way more than this. But I'm just trying to think of the ones that you may have actually watched. One of the Emanuela movies, I'm positive that we watched. He was in one of those. Because <laughs> I've right. in a few of those. But anyway, um, Al Cliver, you, everybody should recognize him for that. This movie is filled with like Italian um, kind of like cameos from other Italian movies for actors, like where you, you kind of recognize the like almost like a Dick uh, Miller kind of situation where it's a that guy character actor. <laughs> and Al Cliver okay. is Porter. This is, I mean, in Zombie, he was one of the guys running the boat. So the fact that he's on a boat now is kind of like Fulci doing a bit of a wink and a nod. Oh, OK. I got gotcha. you. Uh, was he the one who was the zombie slamming up in the door when the movie ends? The friend that they took? I don't know if he's the one slamming on the door, but uh, he does get his... I think he's the one that gets his neck bit out by his lady. Uh, I gotcha. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, um, so the lady, we understand her name's Liza. She's looking through uh, some of the rooms, uh, ruins and she finds all the mummy, a bunch of like mummified bodies, and she's kind of freaked out. 
Then she starts getting visions of the nuns with the, and they, all the nuns have question marks on their foreheads, by the way, because I don't even think they know what they're worshiping. A guy interrupts her and he seems to be the town butcher. And he's kind of like, she's telling them they need to leave. If they don't, bad things will happen. They'll, they'll get there. So get got. Well, she says fuck off and she keeps exploring and she finds all the n- mummified nun bodies on, uh, crucified. Well, so she finds out where they were all, you know, uh, all got done up. She starts taking pictures of all that action because, you know, of course she would. Um, and, uh, she runs over and she finds boss man and she's like, Hey, you know what I found? And he tells her, fuck it. Just forget about it. Don't, don't worry about that shit. That's not what they're here to investigate. Uh, so let's, let's leave that alone because that seems to be what the town people don't like. And that's the end of the first 20 minutes. All right, so pretty good setup. And yeah. when I was we're getting a good setup now. Okay, oh, go ahead. Here's gonna be, and this is something I should probably wait till the end, but I'm just gonna say it right now. I was not a fan of the character development in this movie. I didn't care enough about any of these people. Maybe Liza a little bit and the other dude, but I didn't care enough, and that's kind of what hurts this movie for me, especially for some of the action at the end. Um, I, yeah, I can totally see that. Uh, I don't think that Fulci ever really was interested in making characters likable. He's just presenting them pretty much as they are. So I, I guess, and I, I don't got, even mean likable or hated or anything. I guess I, I guess I feel no strong way to any of these characters. No, see, the thing that I'm actually surprised about for Fulci is that up to this point, the first 20 minutes, we have a pretty coherent, straightforward setup narrative <laughs> that doesn't fuck around or jump around with a bunch of weird images for no particular reason every flashback that's like the cruelty to the nuns and everything like that is all tying together for the story and they're establishing right off the bat that our main character here has a connection in some way shape or form to this because she's been seeing visions of it or in the seance you know she's become aware of it in the seance that the start of the movie that we saw with this and i don't i unfortunately i don't know phil tree well enough to like have been on the lookout for that i was just like wow i it's 20 minutes in and i I really don't feel anything for any of these characters, good or bad. I'm just whatever. They can they can all be whatever. And uh, that's a I don't that's, know if a, per- that's a good that, thing or a bad thing. That's a perfectly valid response because I will tell you the same thing. Like I don't really give a fuck about any yeah. of these folks. But why I started watching Demonia wasn't for the uh, development of these actors. It was essentially a bet with myself on how long before Fulci drops all the through lines and just starts having fun. Um, yeah, okay. At, at least this time around, because I was like, holy shit, this is way more coherent. I mean, you've seen Gates of Hell. You've watched that at my house. You may be blocking yeah. most of it out, but it jumps around every. Everywhere. And by this time in the 80s, Fulci was even less concerned with doing a through narrative for a lot of his stuff. If there was a story, it was like this collage of images that like developed in lieu of creating the story in some way, shape or form. Like it wasn't really like this, where it is very much a narrative straight up set up tale and a rather kind of gothic and creepy one. And yeah, it's super low budget. And yeah, it's real cheap. And the dubbing makes the acting feel much worse than it actually is. But there's still so something about this with what they're putting together where it feels like Fulci's like he's got some kind of passion to this like it it feels like a really passionate um amateur first-time filmmaker or student filmmaker approach to things where like you know they're trying to make up for what they're lacking in their budget and and the acting ability by really just kind of giving that they're all and doing as much as they can with as little as they have and I mean the, the the crucified nun corpses that we see just various flashes of and the images of are super fucking creepy it sets up a mood and you know right away because you've seen other horror films that anytime a fucking rotten corpse is hanging anywhere something with that corpse means it's gonna come back especially in a Fulci movie you know yeah yeah I mean and, something's gonna happen there right and Demonia very much feels like he's playing like he did in the beyond and in the gates of hell I mean especially in the beyond because they find a one time warlock I suppose is what Spike was supposed to be although he was trying to stop this Armageddon and then they crucify him to a wall in a cellar in Louisiana and then throw lie on him to dissolve his head and face <laughs> and then his body's found later and that's kind of what we've got with what's happening with these nuns where they're being crucified and then their bodies have been found later and if you've seen Fulci and you know this is the man that's doing the movie you know good things are coming and you're gonna be patient you know yeah but well, that's true but if you don't but if you don't you 
pretty much are may have abandoned hope by now. And I can see why some folks may dislike Demonium more. I think oh. I may have the first time that I watched this, I may have given up on it before giving it a full chance to actually develop because of exactly what you're talking about. I couldn't get interested in or want to really pay attention to any of the characters. And I'm so glad that this time around I got swept up in the scenery and like all of the all of the textures of the fabrics and you know the kind of stuff that I'm into now that I'm watching it on my projector, you know? In, yeah. Instead of just watching it on my TV. And like I really dug that aspect of it, especially in the setup, especially in the catacombs. You can see all the stonework and stuff. And I'm like, Jesus, man, I know they at least shot this on film because there's no way it would look this good otherwise. <laughs> True. True. <laughs> um Okay, we can move on. I'm sorry. I just wanted to focus on I wanted to focus on my impressions while watching it at the first 20. So there we go. So the next 20 minutes, uh, later on, we uh, get the guy who they asked for help from. And he's on his boat. And he's kind of just toiling about. And he hears a woman laughing. And then all of a sudden, we see a naked woman specter with a harpoon shoot him and kill him. Headless naked woman specter. Thank you, movie. That's a, that's a thank you movie. Yeah, I'd say that's a thank you movie. I don't, I don't see how that's not. <laughs> She's murdering someone, but it's also a specter. So this is how the ghost chose to appear to its to us yes. and its intended victim. And what better way to distract a man in order to shoot him with his own harpoon gun than to have a headless set of tits at him? That would do it for me, man. I know I'd be dead. Um, it'd be all over. I'd have nothing left. <laughs> he gets a but merciful out- death compared to other people in this film. But I went out as I lived. <laughs> Staring at a pair of headless tits. Staring at a pair of tits that may or may not actually exist. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm having an existential crisis about tits and we need to move on. <laughs> right? Um, so uh, later uh, we see uh, the rest of the group. They're all singing some uh, folk songs. They're all having a, a, a good time. And, uh, you know, they're partying a bit. Um the uh, Liza, she's still kind of having issues with what she saw. She's very distracted. Uh, nothing's uh, really panning out for her right now because you know she had these visions of these nuns being executed, and now they've she you know they found their bodies, so they were fucking you know executing the way she envisioned. I suppose that might unsettle just about anybody. Well, not um, only that, but she feels a drawing and a pulling sensation yeah. to all of this that's kind of unnatural, too. Like, you can kind of, they're hinting at it, and they're they're sort of starting to make it more and more obvious that that's, how it ha- that's what's happening. And yeah, she got super upset, and you know, now she's kind of questioning why she's been drawn to it, like, this whole yeah. time. Which, you know, that I, I would as well. Yeah, justifiably um, so. I'm not trying to argue against yeah, that. That's uh if I had some sort of vision at a bullshit seance, I'd feel the same way. Yeah, especially if uh, it ended up being absolutely true, because then I've got to reevaluate all of my belief structure. Yeah, and I, I don't like doing that. That sounds like a lot of fucking work. <laughs> um, right. I'm an American and I will not change my beliefs for anyone. Signed American Christianity. Uh so anyway, <laughs> no matter who tells me. He's out of uh, line, but he's not wrong. Yeah, he's out of line, but he's not wrong. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, and then she's kind of watching them all have fun, and she seems pretty horrified about all the good times these people are having. Kind of like, you know, like, who are these fucking people to be having this good of a fucking time when we're standing in this area, which is apparently very, very fucking just bad for her to be around in. Okay, I was I was developing a theory. Yeah. Um, the thing that they set up at the very, very end, I think they start setting up here that her special connection is very much stronger. The reason that she's upset is because she is feeling what those women felt on that day when they died. And the disrespect to the very horrific events of that day by them having so much fun and celebrating how much alive they are is upsetting the spirits in the tomb there. And she is feeling it and expressing it and it's affecting her. I could see that. Sure. Okay, and I haven't... Okay, okay. it looks like I haven't actually spoiled anything too much about the end. No. But the reason why that is and why I feel that I've been vindicated is because of what is revealed at the end. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I I mean, I didn't see that. That's all reasonable. Um, It's the first touch of weird Fulci starts throwing in the movie. Yeah. So, uh, where the fuck am I now? Um, She's upset that they're partying and having a good time. Yeah. Well, anyway, Paul goes to see Liza... uh, and they talk a little bit, but it's it's a it's a pretty useless little scene. And he leaves shortly after. Liza then dreams that uh, uh, she's kind of like in like this coliseum, 
and Paul's at the top telling her, don't go, like, come back, don't go there, don't go over there. Uh, and she goes anyway because, you know, fuck you guys, don't tell me how to live my life. Um, but, uh, you know, message in this dream. Uh, she then sees, again, the nun's crucifixions. Um, she wakes up, and she is not at all having a good time. Uh, we then see uh, Susie, a different character. She's uh, fussing around with her son, and she tells Liza that Paul went to his site, and that she you know, doesn't need to go with him, that he said that she should stay behind and, and get some rest. Um, and that seems to put Liza off as well, kind of like, hey, I, you know, don't tell me how to live my life. Again, you know, it's kind of like, you know, you're being a bit of a fucking asshole, although... It's a man Liza's- dictating to a woman when yeah. she is able to do the things that she wants to do. Although you could also argue that teams have to look out for team members, and if you have a team member who is consistently seems preoccupied, not really has their mind on the job at hand, but on something else, then maybe you sit that person out for a day, especially if you're doing stuff, you know, uh, archaeological stuff. Wow. All of those management trainee courses are paying off for you. I, I really think so, man. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really becoming a, a part of society. I'm learning how to better be a better team member. I mean, not to anybody, like, important, because uh, I'm not doing any of that shit. But, <laughs> but you know, for you guys, yeah, it seems like I am. Um, <laughs> you know what the right choice is. You just decide to go the other direction, my friend. The, 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 I mean, let's be 100% honest. The right choice is for me not to listen anymore. Um, so, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> for me do whatever I fucking want, bitches. Uh, so, anywho, uh, sorry. Um, all right, so then she starts going around town, and she would like to find, kind of like the, the, the hall, the, the town records, the, you know, uh, pretty much a library, uh, any, around there. Anything that has any kind of indication of something about the history or what happened there, she's just trying to learn as much as she can. But, uh, no one's really helping her. Um, no one wants to help her. Uh, everyone's pretty much a dick. And, uh, so, uh, no one really knows, uh, you know, what to, what to really do here. Uh, but a waiter then tells her, hey, behind that old church is kind of what you're looking for. Uh, so she is able to find it. And, uh, as she goes away, uh, we cut to two, uh, three townsmen and one townsman's like, hey, you know, uh, says it's uh, too bad for her if she uncovers the truth, is what he says. And uh, another old man says, too bad for us all. So, I mean, that's not creepy or nothing. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was extremely creepy and pretty well set up. And again, I'm shocked that they're following this much of a through line because I'm so used yeah. to Fulci just at this point being just all over the place with story, but it's very straightforward so far. Yeah, it really is. Um, so anyway, uh, then an old man shows her to the records she's looking for, but even tells her, like, no one's ever checked these particular records ever in the history since they've been here. So, um, definitely, like, it's even scarier because it's like, they don't even want to find it. Yeah, no one really wants to know anything having to do with what's going on from way, way back when in the existence of this particular town. In Yeah. And whatever may have happened. So the cover up goes back so far that even the records are pretty much buried in soft peat. Pretty much. Then again, we cut back to the town butcher talking to two other guys. And he says they need to cut this off. It's too many, like almost like a bad foot. It's too many bad mojo for the town. Did you recognize Um, the town butcher? I did not. Okay, the movie Demons, where the theater gets taken over. He was the big nose guy snorting coke out of a coke can at the driver's wheel with all the punks. So my hero. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, that nose was brought to you by cocaine, my friend. Ooh, love cocaine. Uh, <laughs> anyway, back to love cocaine. Anyway, back to the butcher, uh, and you anyway, have to cut out that, the rod. And, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, an uh, old lady then all of a sudden shows up and tells Liza to meet her at her place tomorrow, and she'll tell her everything she wants to know, and that's the end of that 20 minutes. So we're getting built up for some shit here. I got to say, her investigation into the past 
and how she's stirring up people in the town and how she's starting to get threatened and stuff that adds another layer of almost like a sort of like person out of their depth stirring up shit like straw dog style where like you know the hillbillies are going to come for them for what they're doing kind of thing there is that tension that Fulci is kind of building with this and and that stuff is really interesting but as you said I I think the main reason you're having a hard time following or really kind of getting into the characters is the dub is not that great and on top of that it is not and on top of that, the actual actors that we're seeing on screen are either over emoting or under emoting, depending upon what um, needs to be done. Yeah. <laughs> they never really quite get right where they need to be. So it really kind of makes it hard to not think about how much of a movie it is that you're watching and really just kind of get into the story. But when you start to talk about the story and what's being laid out, it actually is a really interesting story. And it's kind of cool to see the stuff that she's trying to do. And and I will submit to you, it is extremely hard to suspend disbelief on this film because there are certain qualities about it that just, this is the time where the money starts dropping out in the Italian market for movies like this. And yeah. <clears throat> Fulci got the money. He got the budget for all of the gore and all of the grossness and all of that kind of stuff. But very clearly, because of the budgets, actors with better abilities may not really be available to some of these horror directors at this time. So I, I just, I don't know. Like, I'm not, I don't want to fully put the blame on them because Fulci could have just been phoning it in as a director and not trying to get anything better than them from them because he does that. He has been known to have done that. He was a very much <laughs> workman director who just wanted to shoot this fucker, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's definitely plausible. But what I'm getting, though, is a really interesting story that just feels like they just did the best they could with what they had. Like, it, it just doesn't, there's too much of this that it feels more like Fulci was more invested in this than some of his other films to me, you know, because his, his other films are just like these broad strokes of, of just collage imagery, you know, of horrific death scenes and stuff like that. And this actually has a very methodical, very sincere buildup of a ghost story. And well, I'm, will- I'm kind of interested in it you know and, yeah and i will say this that i'm not uh i'll say this is that uh the story is at least streamlined and easy to follow it that that part's at least not difficult as sometimes not just i guess for me i, I didn't maybe realize just Fulci doing this but a lot of these sometimes italian films can go off the fucking rails and have scenes or do things that have no bearing on the actual story. Right. So far, everything's been way far, way far in line. And I think that's what's keeping me involved. Now, knowing it's Fulci, I'm just waiting for, you know, the, the, the gore to kick up uh, <laughs> a, a notch. You're just, dre- you know. you're just dreading the coming eye violence because you know it's on the way. I I get a little freaked out by the eye violence, but I don't know. I mean, I, I think watching these movies now, I'm not as affected. You're welcome for that, because you used to be really horrifically affected by it. I used to be really horrifically affected by it, and I guess I sometimes still can be. Now, again, I watch this. Uh, I'm still fucking kind of jet-lagged, I'm, or at least I'm feeling run down from the trip. So that also could be uh, maybe the reason I wasn't affected this time is because I'm just I'm, – I'm a little run down. Uh, so, you know, maybe – more wide awake me would have been more cringe down this. But who knows? Maybe not. I've watched a lot of Gorehound movies doing this. And uh, so, you know, I'm a little bit used to it now. <laughs> a little desensitized. <laughs> well, and also I look for, instead of looking at the gore, I'm looking for how it was done now. Right. Well, you know, it's, uh, the, the only thing that I really need to sort of add onto this 20 minutes before I can move on, and I just want to kind of get it out before I forget, um, uh-huh. there are certain scenes in this film that look like they put like a black gauze or like uh, like a stocking over the camera because you could see like the weave of a fabric. Either that or it was being projected onto something and then filmed again or something was wrong with a lens or something. But there were certain scenes in this where it looked like there was a fabric either over top of the image or pressed into the image. Like maybe like the, just like a de- degradation of gra- like a, of, of a fabric that pushed into the actual negative of the film and kind of, you know, left that on the image, you know, that, that, that yeah. mark or whatever, but uh-huh. it just, it was, it was really distracting, but then it started happening too much. So I think it was like a thing that they did to try and give it this ethereal look, but maybe it didn't work. I know that like putting a stocking over the lens or doing something like that to limit the amount of light that comes in and makes it really kind of like smoky and ethereal, but they usually use a white stocking. I, I wonder if they tried to use a black one. 
I don't know. But like, if anybody else sees that and please confer with me, because I think I'm crazy because there was plenty of scenes that had that where I could have swore I saw some kind of a weave of a fabric somehow in the image. Yeah. All right. It could be. Yeah. I think I'm good to go back. Yeah. If you are. All right. Yeah. Uh, So next uh, 20 minutes start, uh, there's more partying. Uh, and they're singing more folk songs, but Paul breaks it up because he's like, uh, motherfuckers, you know, just know what the fuck are any of you fucking doing. Uh, I think Paul's now starting to get tired of the, the partying going on, uh, and, and not so much the working. Uh, it's because he wants to go to sleep and they are keeping him awake. That's the only time he gets pissed. Yeah. So, uh, then at this point, hmm. We see uh, Liza, she's starting to fall asleep, and she dreams of the ruins she found and the crosses. Then we see two drunks who are kind of walking about the tombs, having fun, and they're just hammered. Be honest, uh, Matt, you wanted to hang out with them. I wanted to hang out because they're, I mean, they're just looking for a place to party, all right? It's, it's not their fault that they're looking for a fucking place to party. People need to get off their fucking back about this shit. <laughs> well, people need to be fucking cool. Well, they got yelled at for being too loud, so now they're trying to find a place where they can party and not disturb other people. So they're actually yeah, being relatively they're trying to be respectful, relatively respectful, right? But what they're doing is going into a tomb while drunk, which is a bad idea. That is also true. Um. So anyway, um, they hear some women laughing, which we know it's uh it's bad. Uh, in this movie so far, Al Cliver you, uh, established that for us when the boat captain went yeah, down. Yeah, if you uh, if you start hearing uh, uh, women laugh in this uh, movie, uh, not only are your feelings going to get hurt, um, but you are also going to die. <laughs> yeah, usually when you hear women laughing, your feelings just get hurt. Yeah, usually, I mean, especially a giggle, kind of like what that was. That usually means that, yeah, you're just going to get your feelings hurt. <laughs> Matt, you clearly have baggage from teenage girls giggling near you. Just what? I mean, was it me? What did I do, man? Jesus. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I'm going to need more therapy for that one. Anyway, one falls over, and he falls through like a trap in the hall and falls in these spikes, killing him. And then the second, of course, joins him, falls into spikes, fucking dies, killing him as well. Pretty good effect. Uh, the dummy drops were relatively decent for dummy drops in Italian yeah, films. Yeah, especially if they did it in dark, so, you know, that helps. Yeah, th- it was about a medium-way dummy drop. Really, the second one was more obviously a dummy falling onto the spikes, but the first one I found quite jarring and shocking. Like, I, I just, yeah. I didn't realize he was going to land on spikes, and I didn't think it was going to go through him like I saw. And it, Yeah, I it thought it was going to be one of those, like, a drawn-out dead, like, oh, I fell down this thing, and they're like, oh, there's, like, this tunnel. And, you know, and then they would find a way to be killed there. But falling on the spikes, yeah, I'm with you. It was like, I was like, holy shit, okay. Yeah. All right, so they, they just dead. Yeah, well, like, <laughs> because I knew it was going to come for the second guy, you know, the first guy, when he just kind of fell down there, I thought he was going to fall and then ask for help. The other guy was going to fall and they were going to keep doing a joke. Like, I, yeah. I was expecting that. Maybe they would find a tunnel, like you said. And then just have him fall face plant onto fucking spikes and die. And the way they did it with the dummy, where the dummy just fell forward like he would walking, it looked so realistic and tricked my brain. I had to go back and watch it again. And then I'm like, okay, well, it's clearly a dummy. But the first cut is excellent. It's just the second guy when he falls, the dummy drop that they do is from a wrong angle. And it reveals right off the bat it's a fucking dummy, you know? Yeah, exactly. Then we cut to the corpses so the two men are taken away and the, uh, you know, the medical examiner and stuff. And uh, Liza then goes to visit the old lady, and that is our next clip. Don't pay attention to them. They are my friends. The only ones I can trust. Go. Please sit down. Why don't you tell me why I'm here? You are here to learn the truth, whatever may happen. What do you mean? Often the truth can be dangerous. Dangerous for him who speaks it and dangerous for him who hears it. And you're not afraid? My death is predetermined. It's written in the stars. No one can escape his destiny. I will tell you the story of the old nunnery on the hill 
a tale of violence and sin and blood. It's been hundreds and hundreds of years, and yet I can see it all, as if it had happened just yesterday. There were five nuns in the convent. All of them were young and beautiful, and each of them had a covenant with Satan. At least, that's what was said about them. Back then, some townsfolk even talked about certain wild orgies which were supposed to have taken place beneath the nunnery. No one was able to confirm the rumors. Those young men in the area were supposed to have taken part in the orgies vanished mysteriously. Just as mysteriously, the terrible fruit of those infernal nights also vanished. One night, the time came to put an end to the sacrilege. There was an uprising among the population of Santa Rosalia. They forced their way into the convent and the five nuns were crucified. Their bodies were left to rot in the very crypt where they had consumed their ugly deeds. It was horrible. I saw the bodies. They were still nailed to the crosses. Forget that you have seen them. Don't say a word about it to anyone. Not if you want to stay alive. You know what happened now. And just let it be at that. Go now. Go and don't turn back. And ask God to help you. Uh, should be mentioned uh, during this whole time while she's talking, we get scenes of uh, a nun and a dude boning. Uh, she kills him by stabbing him through the throat with a knife. A pretty cool effect. And blood drains into the cup. Well, there's scenes of two nuns having sex with two dudes, and then they kill uh, the guy simultaneously, but we focus in on the one that does the killing. Yeah. Uh, it's deeply then, pornographic and a thank you movie. Yeah, yeah. Real sweaty. <laughs> uh, Very much so. Yeah, we also get a lady nuns giving birth, and then a, the, a nun in all white takes the baby, throws it into a fire bin. And just lets the baby burn. This would be absolutely so, horrific had they bothered yeah. to make the sound effects match with the burning, like the baby getting yeah. more intense, or um, if the baby's arm moving lost looked... me, actually. I was just like, okay. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm, I'm not as horrified as I should be. Right, like, the baby's arm doesn't look real at all. It's super yeah. over the top, and then they just try to push it too far, and they probably would have done better to bury the arm and not really have it look like that and just have her throw it on the fire and then do some kind of weird sound effect while you watch it burn. Well, and also maybe make the baby, I don't know, scream or something. Uh, <laughs> it didn't really, it, it cried a little. <laughs> Right, they used the sound of a baby crying in the dub that we had, but I don't even think that, I just, I don't know, like it just, it just felt really half-hearted and this is what I was like, okay, I knew we were going to have a moment that was going to be like, ulti in this time and here it is. The part where you're like, oh, Jesus, why? You know, like it's, it just feels like a half-hearted fucking attempt. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, and that all ends at 20 minutes and we go into the final 30 after this. Okay. It is hard to come back from that moment where the baby's supposed to be burned, but when you just think about it, where yeah. you're like, yes, this is supposed to be a horrific moment, um, they could have just said that they burned the baby alive, and it would have had a much better impact than this. I think it would have, yeah, I think they went for a cheap, um, a cheap pop with this, and it, but they didn't go all the way with it. So, I mean, there's, there's, that's just doesn't help, you know? Uh, if you're going to do it, go all the way with it, you know? Get a good baby cry going. Maybe fix, you know, make the baby thing you're throwing in there seem more realistic instead of it obviously being a plastic doll that you just threw in there, you know? Maybe trim the uh, seam of the doll so it at least looks more like a smooth yeah, skin. Yeah. Than like if, a- if you're not going to do any of that, then don't try to go for the cheap thrill at all. It just, 
you know, just describe the, the person, you know, let the old lady describe it. Because that old lady was creepy as hell, and I loved every minute of her on the screen. So, and I thought they actually did a good voice dub for her. That was actually something where I got into, you know, a character I was finally starting to get into. Right. Have her describe what they did to the baby, you know. And I, I think that would have creeped me out a hundred times more and, and maybe even made me, like, oh, my God, you know, Jesus Christ, a little bit more than what this had. This, I just was like, well, okay, you went for a cheap cheap thing on this one. All right. <laughs> you did a half-hearted attempt at a, at a super exploitative, gross-out, edgy moment. Yeah. And yeah. it just kind of... You really went half-hearted at trying to be an edge lord at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you get that sometimes, man. And he didn't have the, yeah. the crew. There's some other effects that they do in this movie that makes up for it for me and still makes me really, really like this flick. But I have no defense for this. It was cheap and it was awful, but there's plenty of other worse stuff in other Fulci movies, too. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, the guy has done great things, so at least, you know, you, you got to at least recognize that. Right. And uh, and no, the, nobody, bull, nobody bats a thousand. The movie also does bring you back from this. It's just that this just happened to be at the end of a pivotal moment before it propels you into the last third of your film. You yeah. know, And that's kind of what sucks about it because it does take some momentum out of it. And I can believe that the first time around that I watched this, I probably wasn't going to give that a break. <laughs> yeah. And I will at least say, though, the guy, um, the guy getting murdered and stabbed, that was that was awesome. I thought that was a good effect. Yeah, yeah. They have some really excellent body mutilation effects in the film. Then they have some that fall short. And then they have some that you can see had it worked out or had they been patient just to take the time to reset, it would have been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we can move on now to the last half hour because I'm itching to talk about it anyway and you know what it is. Yes. All right. Final 30. So we see a cop. Uh, he's trying to pass off a crime scene. He doesn't want to deal with it. Then he's trying to pass it off to the city. Um, but, uh, and it's it seems to be the first victim's vote, boat. But he's trying to pass it off. And then that first victim head comes popping out of the water. So no passing it off for you, cop. You actually have to do your fucking job. Did you not recognize the police officer? That, uh, I did not. That was Lucio Fulci. And he was in full Columbo oh, really? mode in the boat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was full Columbo. Uh, that's 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 a fact. Yeah, I didn't know that was Fulci though. That's yeah. awesome. Fulci always does a cameo. He was also the detective, obviously, earlier on in the film. But uh, yeah, I was not uh, clearly paying attention when you mentioned him earlier. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, um, so uh, then we see uh, we come back to the old lady, and she hears laughing, and then her cats that she loves so much attack her and claw out, literally claw out her eyeballs. Uh, taking one and popping it right out of her fucking head, and that kills her. Uh, this was uh, difficult to watch, but for the opposite reason that Matt found it difficult to watch. I, I literally did find it difficult to watch because it was difficult to watch probably for the same reason you think it was difficult to watch. You, uh, it was just okay. I, I mean, uh, <laughs> okay. It was, it was, if I mean, if someone has a lot of a pet in an Italian film, that pet will attack them. Yes. Um, yeah. The cat attack um, worked to varying degrees. Uh, I just really dislike and have an issue with the howling, yowling, a really scared cat sound. I just find oh, it really gotcha. unpleasant. And that's the part that bugged me. Yeah. Um. I guess this uh, did, I will say it, this did bug me more than almost any other death because this is maybe one of the few characters I I felt something for at all. And the eye trauma um, is pretty grotesque, even though it looks extremely fake. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, it's, it's extremely fake. That's why that didn't affect me as bad. But it's still very gory. So you, you still have that. It's still cool. Um, so why I didn't cringe, because it was obviously fake. I still say, all right, that's a lot of gore. That's pretty cool. But also... I felt something because it's about the only character that I felt had any real development and that I felt something for. Yeah, it was a real complex death um, on multiple levels. I do not disagree. Um, I think the film really gets some momentum back with her death. I do. Yeah, I think so. And the way it was done, the the only animal she cared about killed her. Right. It's a yeah, very so horrible thought... thing to have turn against yeah. you. And that that's why it was very effective for me for this scene, too. Yeah. Um. So, anyway, the cop is questioning the town butcher, who only speaks in mainly riddles and stuff like that, doesn't give straight answers, and this starts pissing off the cop, which I actually don't blame him. I'd, I'd get all sorts of pissy about this, too. Uh, answer my fucking questions, bitch. 
But he's also um, a cop, and you should never answer the questions of a police officer. That's true. But at least then just say no comment. Don't answer in riddles. You're starting to annoy me, too, at this. Lawyer. Uh, that's your response to every question. Yeah. See, Lawyer. and that's fine. You say that, that's fine. That's less annoying than, you know, talking in fucking riddles. <laughs> Don't piss me off. <laughs> Clearly not a fan of that Batman villain, then. Yeah, the Riddler. Yeah, no, I, I, I yeah, no, it's not uh, cool. Uh, <laughs> don't maybe, don't maybe kill you, uh, Riddler. Uh, I'm not Batman, so I, I, I will murder. Um, let's see here. So, um, then uh, the other cop, because you know, of course, the old timey cop, uh, Fulci's character has a younger police officer. Uh, and he talks to uh, Paul, and that's our final clip. As I was saying, Professor, in these detective stories that I read, it's almost always a criminal with an identity problem. Somebody who has to leave a signature on his work. Well, if that's the case here, he left the signature of a monster. Someone who's totally deranged. You could be right, Professor. But we don't want to jump to conclusions. You see, killers come from all walks of life. You'd be surprised at the kind of characters we turn up. Probably, but but there's no doubt in my mind. Well, this one's an insane butcher. Now, you wouldn't by any chance be referring to a local butcher, would you? Well, I'm not referring to any butcher in particular. I simply mean that whoever murdered Porter has the... There's the instincts of a butcher. Young Tory. It could be a possibility. But like I said, we mustn't jump to conclusions. You see, in these novels that I read, the detective who jumps to conclusions is almost always wrong. Haven't you found it to be that way too, Professor? I told you, I don't read detective novels. That's right. You did say that now, didn't you? Now, take this report I have here from Interpol. It brings up some interesting possibilities, ones I've never considered before. What uh, kind of possibilities? Another suspect. Someone I never would have thought about. May I ask who? Why, certainly, Professor. It's you. Me? You're joking, of course. No, actually, I'm quite serious. But don't get upset. You see, had you read some of those detective novels that I was telling you about, you'd know that when you do a murder investigation, you do a rundown on every possible suspect. And you are turned up something, how shall I say it, rather unexpected. What did you discover about me that's so unexpected? Well, Professor, you sure this is something you want to hear about? Yes. It's interesting. First of all, I'd like to ask you some questions, if I may. All right. Ask anything you like. Your feelings about Porter. Were you friends, enemies, what? Well, I had no special feelings about him one way or the other. We were colleagues, fellow archaeologists. The, the difference is he was a marine archaeologist and I work on land. We always cordial with each other. More or less. More or less? Yes, we were cordial. What are you getting at? Well, this report seems to indicate otherwise. says here. Ah. According to this, about, about ten years ago, you publicly refuted one of his publications and effectively accused him of being a fraud. That's an old story that was forgotten long ago. It's on the record at the University of Toronto. Universities keep records on everything. Don't put too much importance on a, a strictly professional disagreement that, that wasn't that serious in the first place. And besides, 
How does that relate to Porter's murder? Maybe it doesn't. On the other hand, this report indicates that it was quite serious. But in fact, you were the one who ended up being discredited and you lost your position as head of the department. Do you remember what the disagreement was about? It's all right, I'll refresh your memory. It concerned the head of a statue, which the victim found at the bottom of the sea. The head which, interestingly enough, had been severed from its body. Is everybody still awake after that? No, we all fell asleep. Everyone's dead. <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> all right, so Paul uh, is wanting to leave, but Liza, of course, she wants to stay. She's she's like, we can't leave. We owe it to our dead friends to finish this job. And really, she just wants to stay because she wants to learn more about what happened to the nuns. <laughs> yeah, she's being suckered in, and she's starting to commune with them, man. That You can tell. Yeah. Uh, then a guy comes in. Uh, it's actually the... the uh, the uh, little boy's father, he comes in with some info that Paul needs for this current dig. And he says, that's fine. We'll stay, but only for this dig. Nothing that you want to do with these nuns. And Liza's not happy about this. Uh, well, the butcher, he starts looking through. We cut to the butcher and he starts looking through the crypt. And he notices through all the crosses, the main nun's body is missing. Well, he heads back to his shop, and all of a sudden he sees a knife, like, falls down on a cutting board. Well, he thinks he hears laughter, and he checks the freezer, and he keeps hearing laughter. Not a good sign. Yeah, and then he starts just getting smacked around repeatedly with slabs of fucking meat. Bam, bam. And then a hook flies off and cuts him right in the throat. Um, and then <laughs> I love that we, uh, in Soviet Russia, where he was, meat beats him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Soviet Russia, in Soviet Russia, meat beats you. Ah, ah, ah. So anyway, uh, and then we see a woman's hand take out his tongue and start hammering it to a cutting board. So you know, y- this guy's got to quit talking in in riddles. That's what happens when you talk in riddles. You fuck up. He fucked up, and now he learned. He won't do that anymore because he's fucking dead. That's what happens when you speak in riddles, motherfuckers. I don't fucking like it. I believe the tough talk you were going for was he fucked around and he found out by speaking in riddles. He definitely fucked around and found out, and I'm happy about it. (laughs) This is one of the deaths where, again, I felt something for the butcher at least. At least I felt something. I didn't like him. So I was happy that he's dead. (laughs) Everything about that is, is is good to me. Um. So, the entire town is now outside the butcher's place, because his wife can't find him. She hasn't found his body yet. She just can't find him, and she's been kind of wailing about town. So, now everyone's getting nervous, because all the shit that's been happening. Well, well, one cop is questioning her, the other, the Fulci cop, he checks the cooler and finds the body. He also finds a white cloth in his hands, and it clutch in his hands. A cloth that is the type that he has not seen in a very long time. Like, I don't think anybody's seen. So it's old. Back at this site, Paul is told that the town folk want to burn the entire monastery mon- uh, monastery down. And so Paul's like, fuck, let's get everyone packed up. And he starts looking for Liza. But in her tent, no one's there, but there's droplets of blood there. Then we see the little kids missing. And um, Dad goes running around looking for him. And we see someone in the white nun uniform has the kid. And this is kind of just piss poor acting and all that stuff. (laughs) Then somehow, somehow, dad ends up tied down with his, either one of his legs tied further, far apart. You know, like he's being kind of, he's strung up really bad. They have spread-eagled him between two trees that look like they're ready to split him in twain. Yes, and no one knows how he got that way. He just did. (laughs) This is where the narrative has stopped trying to make sense and just wanted to do a cool set piece. That's what's going on. So the little kid gets away. He sees, he tells him not to come any closer. The kid, of course, doesn't listen, runs towards his dad, trips open a rope. Dad gets cut fucking in half. Yeah, the trees rip him in twain. Torn in half. Yeah. Yep. Crotch to upper. Okay. Not a, no, okay, real quick. Just let me say this. Yeah. Again. A great effect. I like the effect. Just wish it would have happened to somebody who either A, I really liked, or B, really hated. Uh, y- you know, just so I felt something for it. Because I didn't feel anything for it. Because I didn't know this guy. You've seen this character maybe two minutes out of this whole film? He's not even one of the main characters. 
Uh, I don't know if you're supposed to feel something because technically his son had to watch it and his son did it technically because he tripped over the rope, but I didn't feel that at all. Um, like gruesome hero deaths, you think like, you know, in The Walking Dead and Glenn getting fucking batted down to death and you you feel that because you really liked Glenn or a character you hated, Rhodes and Day of the Dead gets torn in half and you're like fucking good because the guy was a dick and he kind of deserved it. But you also so, kind of like him again because he yells choke on him at him as he's yeah, dying. And then, and then, yeah, and then you have that respect. Like, at least he didn't yo, die like a bitch. He was like, you know, choke on it, you motherfucker. With his last little breath you could muster. Um, but either way, it's something. You feel emotion there. This, I was like, oh, that was a really fucking gnarly effect. That was pretty cool. That was it. Okay. It, it been, so it kind of felt empty. Oh, no, you go ahead. I want to talk about the actual effect. I don't know if you noticed right. or not, but the blend at the top of the chest had torn and they just reattached it to his stomach. So he had two sets of nipples. Oh, I never noticed that. Kind oh, of. The look. They tried to cover it up, but you could kind of tell like what That's was going awesome. on. And you could see the seam still across the top of his chest where it tore. And I think like instead of putting the actor down because they had all these guts underneath it, they were going to just do this fake tear thing and all of that. Uh-huh. And because it just didn't match up right, they were just like, fuck it. Let's just do it. Let's get it over with. You know, yeah. everybody's miserable and angry or whatever. And so they just do the effect. And then when they cut to the wide, it looks super believable. But the one like where it's up close and it starts to tear, you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. You could see the seam really, really bad. But that's great. Once the split happens, it is unbelievably graphic and gory and gross and believable. Um, it's only like bone tomahawk where the guy gets sawed in two with a fucking bone cleaver that is yeah. like more gruesome and believable than this. You know, yeah. like th- yeah. th- I mean, this is kind of the piece that keeps me coming back. Like I will not lie, I bought the Blu-ray of this because I was so impressed with this effect when I saw it on Shriek Show's DVD that when Severin was releasing the Blu-ray, I'm like, we're gonna cover it on the show because I got to see this in HD. That. That was an awesome effect. Yeah, that was really good effect. <laughs> I think they used real guts because they looked way too realistic and they did have yeah. actual sides of meats and things like yeah. that. So I'm pretty sure that they bought some awful somewhere. I'm thinking you're you're definitely right. Yeah. But, and again, fucking a awesome effect. But I think part of effects for me when I get all like, oh God, is when it deals with a character that I have some feeling for whether good or bad i'm not i'm not arguing i'm I'm not going to argue against that at all i yeah i totally i get i get what you're saying but for me watching a guy get split in twain like that and be literally just be like in half like it's pretty fucking equal how well he's ripped in half like all all the way down it's it's not an easy watch yeah i don't (laughs) i don't fucking care who he was before that the movie just went up a notch in my estimation by doing that it did they literally just showed me something that i had never seen before when i watched Nothing else time. because of how fucking gnarly and, and just well done that effect was. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I give two shits about anything else. I like, like I said before, I am surprised at how good the storytelling was up to the point where I said they abandoned it, which is here. Yeah. Because that's not what I've come to expect from Fulci. I come to expect things like this where like people are just torn in half for no reason out of the blue and we just have to accept it because supernatural, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Right. By the time we get to this point, this is all I remember in this movie. And I swear when we're done reviewing it, no matter how much we talked about it and how much I may overanalyze what I'm about to overanalyze, I will forget everything but this part <laughs> of course i mean that makes sense <laughs> because after this the nothing else matters to me about this movie that's all i will ever remember it's like most people get fixated on the zombie versus shark scene in zombie yeah yeah right well, well let's get right down to the rest of the stuff you don't care about yeah let's finish this shit off now yeah um i'm just gonna smoke a cigarette because i'm good yeah yeah right you just said you shot your big wad it's fine uh so Paul is looking for Liza, and he sees one of the ghost nuns walking, and he follows, uh, follows it, and he follows up some steps, some of the ruins, and then we see the mom of the kid. She's in her trailer, kind of crying. She hears laughing, typically not good, and what shows up is her young son just covered in blood. Uh, Paul is again still looking for Liza as the townspeople are storming the place. Uh. Paul sees a nun and turns around and it's Liza in the nun costume. Uh, she question stabs mark him. looking weird sigil thing on her forehead yeah. and all. Yep, she stabs him right in the gut and uh, then she runs away and she starts puking up yellow shit. Well, she returns to the cross and the town people they start burning all the nuns' bodies on that cross on the crosses. They're just getting ready to get rid of this whole fucking thing and burn it down. Paul then runs in, he's holding his wound, and he wants to save Liza. 
Then lies the cross Liza was on is empty. The townspeople are starting to get freaked. Then as Paul's walking in, we see the old corpse nun. So it's it's back to being like a, 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 a decomposed corpse. It's back on the cross. And we see Liza's body reappear, reappears on the ground. Roll credits. Okay. Is Liza dead? Yes. Right. Was Liza dead the entire time? No. Did Liza get called to this nunnery so that they could take her life force to get some vengeance on some folks? I believe so. Well, no, I don't know if she was called, but uh, maybe she kind of was. Yeah. Um, she I, was inexplicably think... drawn to this place, man, for some. Well, I think she was she was going there anyway. Uh, and I maybe the ghost, while she was doing a stupid seance, she tapped into something and the ghosts were like, okay, she's coming here anyway because you know uh the the job's bringing her here and so we know that let's use her uh to try to you know get free yeah but the closer she is to the location the more they control her too obviously yeah as it goes um but yeah she's here uh and i don't believe she does any of the killing actually uh until it's uh it's all said and done. I, I until I think the only person she uh she, she I think she traps the dad and it, so inexplicably his death is on her on Liza and then of course Liza also stabs uh Paul. But I think that's when Liza finally became part of all this. But Other she's than also that, I think it was Spectres. I believe that she was brought there in some way, shape, or form. You could say it started at the seance. Maybe it was multiple seances. Somehow she wormed her way onto this excavation. Somehow. Whatever. However it ended up happening, she got there because she was supposed to be there, and the nuns needed her to be there. We can definitely agree on that, and it was a supernatural yeah. cause of some sort that lured her there. Somehow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that the minute she got there, and the closer she got to the place, and the longer she remained there, the more they had control over their surrounding environment through her, like she was a conduit to where they could affect the living. And while she was there is when a lot of this takes place. And the more they had her on their their side or the more she was learning about them or the more that she was connected to them the stronger they got and the more the killings increased by the end of the movie until they completely took her over and basically are feeding the rest of their curse on the power they took from taking her life at least that's how i kind of gauged what was going on or was thinking what was going on with the story and that she was dead by the end of it and so like yeah, i can see that so it's almost like the sacrifice that they needed to complete to get whatever they needed they did through her yeah I, yeah i get that I didn't see that. I mean, it's, that makes sense. It's the closest that I can figure, but they set up something like that where she's being lured there and they hint that she is really feeling the influence and is being shown these visions that like something is basically drawing her to it. And it feels like it's a very supernatural thing and it feels like she's predestined to have to go and that really like everything is set up almost to the point where you feel like they're setting it up that she's either reincarnated from one of their spirits to do this vengeance quest or she's she is like just a ghost that was released or to do she's it. Just like a clairvoyant type. So she's open to that kind of horseshit. But maybe she didn't know how to protect herself from realizing yeah. what is a harmful so spirit. The ghosts are like, hey, we can tap on her and we'll use her. Yeah. Yeah. She's kind of like Carol Ann in Poltergeist 2, where the, you know, the ghosts yeah. are coming for her because they know they can use her. So they're seeking her out. Yeah. Wherever she is or whatever, you know, yeah, like something similar to that. I think it overall, I found it really creepy and really cool. I freely admit all of the things that you had to say that was negative about it, but I dug it. I think like all Fulci films, this would definitely be a better group watch because you can kind of belly stuff watch, together, you know. But OK, with with all my criticisms aside, I would fully watch this again because I think the effects are really super cool, especially for their time and probably for especially for the budget. I thought the the I guess they're not really sets the locales they shot in were beautiful yeah. and and perfect. Yeah, I was so, I was surprised. There's the, yeah. all, other than the gauze in front of the lenses that I talked about, so uh -huh. many scenes in this film are so amazing looking and so incredible. And that's why I was like so put off by the few scenes that were like that that I didn't know what it was supposed yeah. to be. And of course, the story I felt was straight lined, easy to follow. And what, not a lot was wasted. 
Um, I probably could have done without the final clip of the movie. Uh, I, I included it just because it was a long bit of dialogue that you don't get a lot of in this movie. Not a lot of dialogue in this movie. Um, but the cop questioning Paul as a red herring and nothing ever really comes to that because by the time you, you know, get to that, you're almost out of movie. Right. So, um, I, I guess not much to that. I think I felt like that was just really kind of padding, uh, just trying to pad out the episode or, or the the movie, <laughs> um, but in it in all in all, I felt like the movie stayed on topic, didn't give us a lot of extra that it didn't end up using or wasn't part of the story, um, and and again, brilliant effects and great sets. I think the moments that you were feeling were dragging or padding was their attempts at character development that just weren't working. And that's, yeah, it could be too. Yeah, and that's really all I have to add because everything else you said, I pretty much agree with, which is uh, shocking to me as it is to you. So. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm a. I don't know how I feel about all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for once you were eloquent and well on point, and it has nothing to do with the fact that I'm feeling lazy and trying to squeeze in some psyop news. All right, let's do it. All right, so this week for the Pirate Radio Edit, I am doing various uh, nun theme songs or songs that fit along with that, and this one just so happens to be from King Diamond. So those of you who are listening in the Pirate Radio Edit, that is Into the Convent, which is part of the I album, I do believe, from King Diamond. If you are listening on the main feed, you are currently hearing the soundtrack from Demonia. Somehow I found it out there. Don't ask me why or how and everybody be fucking cool about it, okay? All right. Uh, well, speaking of things that would be cool, could you give me some sorry off news? This comes from Robert. Ah, man in the field. Yeah, man in the field. We, we haven't gotten to do news in a long time. So uh, this this is, uh, he uh, tagged this as a must read. Uh, in fact, he said, he said, so help me if this isn't read on air. He, he was going to come to Omaha. It was really threatening. So I think we should probably fucking read it. I don't want to curtail um, the threats though, Matt. And I yeah. will give, I will simply just give him your address and we will just <laughs> let you deal with this on your own. All right. BBC News. Man sues Apple claiming iPhone turned him gay. <laughs> what? Man sues Apple claiming that the iPhone turned him gay. A Russian man has launched a lawsuit against Apple. Cla- well, how did we know? Claiming that an iPhone app turned him gay. Wait, what's where was he from again? Russian. Uh, what? He's a Russian man. This feels yeah, like a Russian scam. man. This feels like a scam. It, it feels like a Russian bot, but we're going to find out. He says this comes after an incident involving gay coin cryptocurrency. Saying he suffered moral harm, he is asking for one million rubles, according to a copy of the complaint seen by the new agency AFP. Homosexuality was decriminalized in Russia in 1993, but anti-gay prejudice is rife. In 2013, Russia passed legislation banning the spreading of what it described How as How old gay is this? Propaganda. I feel like we've done this before. He just posted this in October. Oh, he posted this on October 4th, 2019. Maybe we did do this. One I know already. we fucking did this already. We must have done this one already. <laughs> Hold on. I'll have to figure out another one. <laughs> uh, it's the first one that popped up. I was like, okay. Um. <laughs> Well, that's how long it's been since you've checked your notifications for that shit, I guess. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. No, I just searched Sastake Shyam News, and uh, 
Let's see here. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> okay, hold on. Give me a second. Because I don't think we did this one. But you have to get your shit together in order to be able to even read the title? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, yeah. that's going to be good. Okay, it's fine. Okay. Compose yourself. Uh, this, one's, uh, this one's from Christopher. Our, our man, uh, Christopher Page, the uh, yes. time-shifting yeah. orphan. Yeah. Drunk man by sex doll. It is mortified when it's delivered to the neighbor. Thank you. And if we've done this before, folks, please let us know. Maybe we should just discontinue yeah. PSYOP news altogether. No, 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 I'll figure out some other way of doing PSYOP news. Uh, <laughs> I'll go back to pulling them on my own. Pulling it just to pull, pull it? Pulling it just to pull it. <laughs> Uh, all right. Uh, the anonymous lad admitted he'd ordered the sex doll, uh, mon- the sex doll monstrosity, after having too many alcoholic drinks and needed advice on how to get rid of it discreetly. And other we all know that alcohol news. lowers our inhibitions. What? Ooh, is that me getting a metal rod shoved up my rectum? In other uh, horse sex news. We all know that alcohol lowers our inhibitions. It makes us do things we would never usually do, whether that's dancing on tables, ordering another round of shots, or arguing with your pals. Or agreeing to do a podcast. But drunk shopping is one boozy consequence, which is usually only results in a funny antidote or a bizarre new piece of decor in your home. Unless you're this anonymous bloke who posted his issue on a community Facebook group after a booze-fueled weekend. He explained that he drunkenly ordered himself a sex doll, and it was delivered to his neighbor's home while he was out, uh, while he was at work. Uh, and the package was not at all discreet. And, uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's, there's a picture in this article. <laughs> it's literally this. Yeah. You can tell what exactly what this is. This see, it's almost like what your buddies would do if they were just like sending you something, but they just decided to package it to look really bad. Okay. Yeah. Where it's obviously like a doll shaped human being yeah, type thing. Yeah. I mean, this is obviously a sex doll. <laughs> this is obviously a sex bot. Um, the embarrassed lad wrote, please ignore not allowed or slash inappropriate, but wonder if anyone could help me out. When the Euros was on, I got hammered and drunk me, uh, thought it'd be an excellent idea to buy a full size, uh, fuck, this is going to get posted, to buy a full life size sex doll off of eBay after England lost. <laughs> he said he forgot about it until he got emails say they had dispatched in that time in that time and by that time it couldn't be canceled so it arrived in the post earlier than expected and needless to say he was mortified as he was at work so his neighbor who had just moved in agreed to sign for it when he was out uh, to add to his horror uh, he <laughs> goes I dread to know what she is thinking see now I'm starting to feel like we covered this one too did we? yeah no, <laughs> I don't think so. Something very vaguely familiar about all of this. <laughs> I think a lot of people, I think we've talked about sex dolls a lot, though. <laughs> I mean, yes, but also I feel like we've done this one, though. Well, I mean, hold on. Corpse Wait a second. Well, yeah, hold on. <laughs> That's like a double psyop news fail right now, because I really I do know, feel man. like we've done something like that before. God, this shows you how long it's been since we've done some psyop news. Uh, <laughs> Fuck it, I'm done. This is all outtake shit. Done. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here you go. I got, I got one that I know we haven't done. All right, this is uh, this is just what I found. It's a free country. Man threatens TSA agent's life, throws checkpoint uh, station, strips naked, and masturbates. Charge of state. Whoa, what? That okay. That took a turn. Okay, we go back and let me right. let me hear that one more time. Okay, and just a little slower for some of us that may be a little Delta Eight heavy. Not a problem. Man screams, "It's a free country!" Uh, then threatens a TSA, a TSA agent. I'm following you so far. Throws a checkpoint station. Oh, like one of those like wheel away stations that they hide behind. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm okay. I'm following you. Go ahead. Strips naked. Yeah, that part I didn't want to understand you, but yeah. And then masturbates. It's clearly out of fear, right? Yeah, I mean that's probably a fear boner. If I had to guess, that's a fr- no, or it's a freedom boner. If you want a fear boner, or a freedom boner, yeah, right. America is well, a bunch uh, of cunts. This is out of Minneapolis. Oh my god! Well, okay, that's a major throughway kind of airport. So yeah, it's an international airport, right? But like, still, Jesus but, fucking Christ, man. 
All right, telling agents he did not have to stop because it's a free country, a 44-year-old Minneapolis man is charged with threatening TSA workers at Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. The charge of state, he also swung a station line post before throwing it at agents, taking his clothes off and masturbating. I'm already the head getting count- I might as well grab this guy's dick. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office has filed a complaint against Frank Towers. Investigators say the incident happened at the uh, subway checkpoint early last Friday morning. Towers allegedly told one TSA employee that he was going to kill them. Officers gave him commands to stop and move away from the checkpoint, which he did not abide. Can't pay a bail? Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. The charges state that when Towers was tasered, he swung his arms above his head in an attempt to hit an officer. Let's jack Back up or something. Backup officers took Towers into custody while he continued to fight with them. Old cops are Surveillance video footage shows Towers punching and headbutting TV screens at the airport, taking Jesus. his clothes off. And masturbating. This happens about an hour before the incident at the checkpoint. So for an hour before he threatened TSA agents, he was just headbutting uh, cameras, taking off his clothes, and jerking it. Pulling it just to pull it. Pulling it uh, just to pull it. Yeah. Uh, yeah Towers has been... took my paper clips. <laughs> he definitely had a paper clips moment. Uh, Towers has been charged with fourth degree assault against a peace officer as well as making threats of violence with reckless di- disregard for risk, both felonies. He has also has at least three charges in other criminal cases still pending involving I don't know. domestic weird. assault weird. Pissed off. <laughs> in Olmstead <laughs> County. I'm just he playing back audio of people that have witnessed him headbutting posters and things. I'm determined oh. to have your brain. I'm determined to have your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that guy, um, he got in there. He, uh, he was in it to win it. <laughs> he, uh, he went full on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, that's, uh, that's some serious mental health issue behavior right there. Like, yeah, you don't walk around just like headbutting posters in an airport and fearlessly masturbating at people like that. If you're a well adjusted just, individual, clips, just all of this, str- clips, uh, all of this, just. Stroking it while maintaining eye contact. <laughs> Cliff. I feel, I feel like you kind of wanted that one. I, th- I think I did. I think I wanted that one. I think you wanted a little too, too much. I think- <laughs> oh, gross. I feel so fucking disgusted with you right now, and I'm just going to end this shit. Uh, that's probably the best. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.
right, so if you're listening on the Pirate Radio Edit, chances are you are pretty fucking outraged that the vibrators and Jesus always lets you down. I don't know. Why, why are you that outraged? On this show? <laughs> right. Like, if you haven't learned your lesson by now that something irreverent or something horrific or just something yeah. just all that weird and fucked up is just going to be on this show. Is this your first episode of Cinema Psyops? And if so, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> we well, tried to I'm warn not. you. <laughs> I mean, right at the beginning of the fucking episode, we've warned you. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> this is just two broken halfwits pretending to offer insight on movies. We are telling you the truth. Yeah, I mean, we're not the smartest guys around, all right? <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're, we're not here to try to change your life, okay? <laughs> you can speak for yourself on that. This show is designed to try and change your life. If you'd like to find other instances where Matt has tried to play down the damage that we purposely do to you on this show, the 326 other instances of that ever happening if it ever fucking did legionpodcast.com forward slash cinema dash psyops it's located right there which is our main landing and or launching page yeah all right well that's that okay maybe ruining people's lives yeah we're kind of into that <laughs> not intentionally we're just leading by bad example yeah one of the things that we do offer to support you and bring you up and make your life better is our instagram feed cinema underscore psyops where thrice daily i try to post memes during your work week yeah i mean they're everyone's memes it, the community memes. Right. It's, it's really nice. Yeah, they belong to all of us. Share and share alike. Yeah. Steal away. That's what I did. That's how I got them. They belong to everyone. That's- that's for you, comrades. You can also find us available on Twitter. I am at court underscore psyop there, and he is at psyop Matt. And I know everyone really wants me to talk about twitting tweets to a bunch of twats and all of that kind of stuff, but I'm a little tongue-tied, I'm a little tired, and I'm a little wired, and I just want to go to bed. A little wired? Are you going to try to go to bed? It's going to better filter some more of that fucking Delta 8. <laughs> I was making a reference to the Nicolas Cage Gone in 60 Seconds. Oh, okay, I got you. Oh, Jesus Christ, that's so shameful to have to admit. Other things that are shameful to have to admit is that I am still available on Facebook, even though I got uh, a comment against community standards warning for saying someone was going to get Zucker fucked for having a nipple available in their post. Really? True story, but I'm still available there in our group, which is Cinema PsyOps and me, myself, as Court PsyOps. I don't know, maybe it's just because my phone app didn't block it or something. I don't know, but... I've still been able to do it, so whatever. And Matt kind of exists online in a way that you should just probably ignore him because for his mental health, he just needs to be left alone. It's most likely a Russian bot anyway. <laughs> but you can reach out to me for contact involving the show, Court at gmail.com. And if it's important and I really need to tell Matt about it and you don't mind disturbing his mental health, then I will. Yeah, and Court knows exactly that I'm a Russian bot. I always have been. <laughs> But he accepts me in that way. Well, while you're out there trying to figure out whether or not that's a car in that square, kick the fuck out of this weekend. Make it your bitch. Recording. And I am recording. One, two, three. How's there your aim for looking? Looking good. All righty. We both watched 1990s Demonia, correct? Demonia, yes. Demonia. Demonia. Yeah, like with like ammonia, only with more demon. Yes. <laughs> Demonia. It's the only way you get out blood stains after a sacrifice is with Demonia. <laughs> it's one way to make sure that the CSI unit in Italy cannot trace you is with demonia. Yeah! <laughs> All right, speaking of yes, you hear that okay? Too loud? Too yep. soft? Perfect. Okay, awesome. I had to uh, change some settings because I recorded with uh, Rick and Danny doing a commentary for the Legion uh, Patreon stuff. Right. Um, 
It's like an extra super special episode that's going to be released for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> an, extra, an extra super secret, double secret probation episode. Uh, yes. Although I don't think I was supposed to reveal who I'm recording with besides Ricky. I, I really don't know, but like that'll just tease uh, people even more because they yeah. won't know what we're talking I mean, about. Because, yeah, you can cut all this shit out and not like, or, what's anybody going to do about it? Or I could just leave it in for the same reason and let's start the show. <laughs> And while you're doing that, we're going to take this break and play this fucking promo. All right. This will keep you quiet. <laughs> oh, hi there. I didn't see you. My head you does seriously fucking hurt from show. laughing. <laughs> I'm Bo Ransdell, and I'm one of and easy to follow so far. You, 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 sorry, that got really loud, louder than I thought pouring a drink would be. Uh, my, my copy over, was, was, sometimes scenes would get all distorted and stuff, so... I don't know if that was just the movie or just my copy over. It wasn't anything too terrible. It was always like a lot when it would, things would switch over or there was a fast movement. Oh, that's probably just my encoding for ripping it to a smaller file size. Probably. Hey, give me one second. Okay. Just keep rolling. It's fine. All right. Sorry about that. Did you decide to pour your drink away from the microphone so it didn't sound like you were peeing? No, no. Actually, I didn't. I had to uh, run. One of my belts is up on my bar from yesterday, and all of a sudden I looked over, and the back end was getting a little heavy, and it started slipping, and I didn't want to fall off the fucking bar. <laughs> That's fair. That would have that would have disrupted the show, too, so you, you made the right it, choice. It would, it would have made me have a bad night, too. So. <laughs> all right. I'm... That would have been, that'd have been no go on that one. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry All this right. movie brought things to the surface for you, my friend. I'm glad you're willing yeah. to work through yeah, them. Yeah, man. I was like, good Lord, can I maybe just get stabbed or something? Nope. Your hell is no actual physical pain. Just when you walk past a group of girls, they're just going to giggle. Fuck. Yep, that's hell. That's my hell. There we go. <laughs> that's it. And, just constant. And to take down your complete sexual history, two giggling girls. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> Yep, nope, that'd do it. That, that just about do it. Congrats. Good job, Satan. <laughs> Be right back. I'm going to grab some tissues. All right. I'm back, but we still got like three At minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the next two clips are pretty long. <laughs> next clip is an hour and a half. Some towns. <laughs> the next clip is just the last half of the movie. All right. Is that Five minutes. These detective stories that are yeah, happening. this is a long one. All right, I'm gonna take a nap. Somebody you wake me up when it's over. Yeah, you are, listen, it was only three clips. Dude, last week I did like twelve because I did not want to write shit Someone who's down totally at all. You don't could feel be right, bad. I'm just fucking with you. But we don't want to jump. That's another reason There's you should no listen to that episode mind. so you can hear how much of a hypocrite I am. Yeah, <laughs> you fucking hypocrite. Same picture. <laughs> I'm going now to now. I'm going to have to. And that's how our relationship ends. You're going to dump me now. You'll be like, you son of a bitch, you talk shit about me when I'm not around. <laughs> I simply mean that. And I'm like, this is care. news to you. Why? It's but not, though. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about your opinion. I love that he's basing reality on an off he read. I know, right? That's not that right. I do that, too. He did say that. Did I've never done that ever. This Oceanside shit's making me have to pee. Yes. I know, right? It's interesting. First of all, I'd like I'm to ask you my key. Gotta go bathroom? <laughs> I'm not sure if Just I want to include any of this in the outtakes or not, because I don't even know how much outtakes it. we're going to have. Were your friends, <laughs> enemies being discredited, you lost your position as head of the barn. Dun, dun, dun. Do you remember what the disagreement was about? <laughs> Red herring. <laughs> exactly that I'm a Russian bot. I always have been. But he accepts me in that way. Well, while you're out there trying to figure out whether or not that's a car in that square, kick the fuck out of this weekend. Make it your bitch. <laughs> well done.
<laughs> FYI, right as the episode ends, I'm going to play Stone Temple Pilots Creep right where he comes in with the I'm half the man I used to be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. That's going to be perfect. I just wanted your reaction. You can stop now. No, that's perfect. That's good shit. <laughs> so they've already heard the joke before I say this. I just wanted yeah. you to know because you didn't get to hear it live. So yeah, All there right. you go. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and I'm stopped.